A couple of years ago, through a good friend, I managed to acquire a Colchester Chipmaster lathe. As you can see, it's not in perfect condition. It's been stood in a barn for a number of years, untouched. But it looked mechanically pretty good, so I decided to take a punt at it. All of the serial numbers on the bed, the headstock and the carriage all matched up. And so I thought, yeah, I think it'd be worth it. As you can see, there's lots of grime all over it, but I decided I would do a full rebuild on it. It came with a lot of accessories, um, lots of tooling, and even a capstan attachment, which I would later sell to help pay for various upgrades on the lathe. I got some mates around, we managed to get it into my garage, and the same day I started stripping it down. So the carriage came off as did the towel stock uh, first, and so immediately I started stripping it down, uh, ready to rebuild it and repaint it. This here is the towel stock that I'm stripping down. Um, it works on a cam. Just like all my other uh, things that I restore, strip it down, a light coat of filler just to fill in any minor defects and then uh, go with the enamel paint. You can see the towel stock came out pretty nice. I then worked on the carriage, uh, or the apron as it's also known. Uh, I stripped it down as far as I could. Uh, this was a fairly complicated component, but I managed to remove all of the gears. Um, I had it uh, placed in ultrasonic bath. It was filled with swarf. Um, the th most difficult part was this section here, which it, which uh, runs off, I don't know what it's called, but it, it runs off of uh, the, the lathe's power and um, it allows you to have the mechanical uh, movement of the carriage. It was a, a quite a lot of grime everywhere, but I managed to remove most of it. Uh, there's one part that you can't remove easily because it has a plug that's hidden. Um, you have to punch it out, but to get to it, you have to remove paint and filler. Uh, but once I found it, then everything else started to come apart. But as you can see, it all went together quite nicely. And I was very, very pleased. The only thing I didn't like was that the handle uh, had already snapped off before I got the lathe. Uh, this is a part where I had a big oil leak um, on the gearbox, which I would later sort out. So here you can see the gearbox is removed. And I do exactly the same thing. I mean, the gearbox was working perfectly fine other than this oil seal, which had failed. Um, Kent Bearings supplied me a new oil seal, and I cleaned it all up and put it back together, replaced all the oil. Uh, on the headstock, uh, I didn't go too far with this because the spindle bearings are extremely expensive. You're looking at about £700 for a set of bearings for the spindle. So I decided against completely stripping it down. Um, it felt good. There was no play in the bearings, uh, so I, I just cleaned it up, gave it a, a new fresh coat of paint, and again, it came out really, really nice. All the oil was replaced as well on this. So now I started on the bed. Uh, the bed had to be painted in situ because it's extremely heavy. Um, the slave weighs about half a ton all in. Um, but again, same as before, it all came out quite nicely. This is an induction hardened bed as well, so there wasn't a great deal of wear on it. Uh, I then started painting the case, not the case, the, uh, the table for it, but I didn't go too far with it because I, I was going to paint it in situ. It's, cause it's, um, in hindsight, I wish I painted all of it at the same time, but I think I was a bit impatient wanting to get it into the workshop. The lathe sits on three concrete pads that I made. Um, I just injected cement into some uh, steel box section uh, with holes in. I then cut them into the floor because the floor wouldn't be able to handle the weight, but the, uh, the concrete underneath it would. Uh, this lathe is quite strange and it sits on just three mounting points and including the the, uh, 
the ways as well. They only sit on three also, so it's sort of like a triangle on a triangle. Um, it just keeps it balanced all the time so you don't have twisted ways. Here I started to clean up some of the name plates and information plates. Um, I basically just paint them all black and I scrape off the paint with a scalpel on the raised sections and it comes out really, really nicely. Once I got the uh, all the components into the shed, I then started to put it all together. It wasn't too difficult to take apart. The manual is very useful for this because it gives you um, a lot of information of how everything's assembled. This is the variator which changes the speed of the lathe. I have absolutely no idea how it works. All I know is it uses cones and balls and all sorts of things. Quite complicated. Um, I trusted it, it, that it would work, um, which it did. Um, I changed the motor from a three phase to a single phase, um, wired it all in fine. Um, I hadn't finished painting it all yet. I'm just testing it here to make sure that everything works, uh, which it did. Um, I first thing I made was a new handle for it, which you can see here. Um, yeah, it all went quite well. Uh, I managed to line up the head and the tail stock nicely, and it cuts nice and straight. Here you can see the mirror finish on this stainless steel piece of uh, metal, which I machined using a boring bar, which has a lot more flex in it. So I was really pleased with that. Um, here I've painted the rear cover and the splash shield at the back. The speed up and slow down uh, brass plates were also done in exactly the same way as the other plates and then riveted on and they came out quite nicely. So before you come to use the lathe, after you've used it for a while, you have oiling points that you need to use. Uh, so showing two here, one here, two here, and two on here. We also have uh, an oil pot that we have to fill up as well, which oils the ways and the gears. And we can see another one just at the front here. At the back you can fill up the headstock and you can also do the gearbox from opening up the rear cover and um, we also have the gauges the, or the sight glasses to show us our levels. So opening up the back cover uh, we can now see the variator and you can see the level sight glass which needs to be at the correct height. It uses the same oil as the headstock um, I purchased all of these oils uh, from eBay, weirdly enough, um, but all of the correct grade of oils are in the manual and you have to use the right oil, because if you don't, you're going to damage your lathe and it's a complete waste of time and money. And here you can see where we fill up the oil for the gearbox. So on these sight glasses, we can see that we have the correct level of oil. With the gearbox the oil level will change as you change gears uh, because the slide bar moves in and out and it pushes the oil in and out with it. Uh, it uses a clutch to start it up, uh, to start the, uh, the head spinning. Um, my old Drummond blades I used to have never had anything like this and yeah, once you go clutch you, you don't go back. Speeding it up, uh, it all runs nice and smooth. Slowing it back down again, uh, you release the clutch and push it back further and it engages the brake. But my brake on this I think is a little bit warm because it requires a, a fair bit of effort. Then engaging the back gearing, you can see that the, he the head now rotates a lot slower. Uh, but it also has a, a huge amount of torque as well. So it's very good for tapping, things like that. When changing any gears on this, the head stock uh, must be stopped. Absolutely no rotation inside uh, the headstock. To use the gearbox, we pull out the main handle, then rotate, then slide it along the slider to the corresponding hole and push it back in again, making sure it's fully engaged. When the lathe is running, you can see this, this bottom bar spinning and this controls the automatic feeding functions and start it up we just lift the red knob at the front and it clicks in place 
and it starts to move the carriage uh, left or right depending on which way that bar is spinning. You push it back down again to stop it and then if we pull out this knob here and lift it up again and then it's going to be the top slide that now rotates. And by switching this handle over here we change the direction. So we're now going anti-clockwise whereas before we were going clockwise. And we push it back down again and it stops. And now we can freely move uh, anything on the carriage. So looking at the gearbox, uh, we can use this guide for giving us the speed settings for cutting screw threads. And looking at this, I can see for 18 turns per inch, I need second gear speed setting A. So to do that, let's lift the lever slightly to the left, which you just can't quite see, but it's labeled A, B and C. And then on the right hand side here, we have the gearbox uh, selector and you just pull the knob out and then slide it along to the corresponding gear. To engage the thread cutting you have to first insert this I think it's called a dog clutch engagement so now you can see the top bar spinning and we also have a dial with numbers on them and notches and every time a number or a notch goes in line with the indicator just about it you lift the handle and then the carriage will move with it whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise uh, so you can do left-handed threads as well as right and then put it back down again stop it if you're, using, if you're using metric then you have to go on the same number every time but with imperial it's just any notch and that's it, that's the Colchester Chipmaster. I found it to be an excellent lathe over the past couple of years. I use it a lot. Um, yeah, and it gives really good surface finish when you use it properly and have the right tooling. Um, yeah, very, very good lathe. I'm sure in future videos you'll see it being used a lot more. I can highly recommend it.